Hello, today I'm being joined by Michael Oberlot, a former colleague of Anaware who is now a researcher at the University in Queensland, Australia. Uh, Michael, could you briefly introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you, Stefan. My name is Michael, as Stefan has already said. Uh, I moved to University of Queensland nearly two years ago. I was once at Anaware as a project engineer and I got an opportunity to come to University of Queensland to pursue research topic in thermal energy storage system that will be applicable in concentrated solar power plants. Excellent. Um, so you already um, hinted on it. So today we'll talk about uh, CSP, concentrated solar power, um, it versus uh, regular solar power. Can you just very briefly elaborate sort of what's the difference um, between these two technologies? Sure. Uh, so CSP technology really tries to give us large scale power production using renewable energy technology. Whereas uh, PV would be actually deployable in small scale, that could be even in small households. So why we have this ambition of pursuing CSP is really because of its potential of being able to, to give us, let's say, base load if we get the reliability of it. So, so the re reliability really comes in when you have um, a reliable storage system that can give us even energy when the sun goes down. Great. Um, I understand also here in the UAE, uh, they're building now a lot of solar plants. Uh, they are building um, PV solar plants, but also CSP uh, uh, solar plants. And what I have seen in these tenders is that the CSP power plants tend to be um, more expensive uh, at a magnitude of uh, double, triple uh, the, the price per kilowatt um, hour. But as you also indicate that the benefits of uh, CSP is that it basically provides also storage. Um, and you are focused on the research regarding the material that are being used as part of the storage to the, the, the materials that you use to heat um, as part of the CSP process. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So what we are really focusing on is trying to make CSP reliable. We are not reinventing the wheel here, but we are just trying to use a different material for thermal energy storage system. So recent technology or the current technology that is mature tries to use a um, molten salt technology, which basically uses, uh, which basically you can call it sensible heat storage. So what we are proposing is to use a um, phase change material that stores energy as it changes phase from uh, solid to liquid and can give us that energy as it changes from liquid to solid. So the beauty of using the phase change material that we are trying to research in is it can give us large volume of energy storage compared to the same capacity of sensible energy storage system, which in this case uh, is um, molten salt technology. Great. And uh, this technology or these materials that you are working on, is that more suitable than for utility scale or industrial scale uh, or potentially even residential? What scales are, or what use are we talking about? All right, so the storage we are talking about is going to be deployed for uh, large scale applications, which could potentially be the base load application for energy supply to the, to the populace. So the beauty of phase change material is that based on how it has, it has been used for small applications, let's say uh, house water heating, it really absorbs the energy and gives the energy at pretty much consistent temperature range. So we're trying to scale up this to be applicable into, um, let's say large energy production, CSP plants. So how we are doing this is trying to use the advantages PCMs give, but they also have their downside, which is low thermal conductivity. So we are basically trying to enhance its process of storing and releasing heat. And if that application works fine, 
then we, will, we think it will be mainly applicable to larger power plants. And this obviously will depend on how big the power plant is wanted to be, or generally we'll be doing scaling up of the storage system based on the capacity needed from the power plant. Great. And um, if the materials that you're working with are successful, do you expect that it uh, has mainly a techno technological advantage that you have larger uh, storage capacity or do you expect also that it's uh, more cost competitive versus molten salt or other technologies? So the advantage at the moment that we are trying to explore is phase change materials can give us the energy at a consistent temperature, which would mean that if we are running a heat transfer fluid to extract that energy from the phase change material, we do not expect much degradation of temperature all the time, which is mainly the drawback in uh, molten salt technology. So if this approach is proven to be right by us enhancing the heat transfer from the phase change material, then we'll look at the aspect of trying to make it uh, financially reliable or to make the projects bankable. So making the projects bankable, I think, really will depend on how uh, the policies will change towards uh, using that kind of technology. Example in okay. case would be if, um, PV technology started at really high price, but now we are seeing the cost is really low. So it comes with the time once the technology has been proven to work fine. Great. And where, at, at what stage of this research are you? Is it at an early stage or are you already working on prototypes? How soon do you think that technology might be ready for the market? That's a kind of a tricky question to anticipate at the moment. But what I would say is um, my research in particular focuses on trying to develop a heat exchanger that will absorb, that will help the phase change material absorb and release that energy efficiently. The other groups which are working on more or less the entire project, which they say the overall objective of the project are focusing on developing, uh, let's say, heat transfer fluid uh, chemicals that can also try to boost up the temperature compared to the current uh, heat transfer fluid, which is just uh, organic oils. So, in all in all, it's a, it's, it's a Australian government funded project which has got stages, um, not just all near focusing on storage. Australian government is looking at making the entire project work from solar receiver storage up to when we got down to the turbine power generation section. So, overall, like, we have stages, for example, if I'm not mistaken, this current phase is going up to 2023. So we expect to have tangible results by 2023. Okay. And uh, is, is this a, a, a research program that is focused on the universe, uh, Queensland University or is it uh, a, a, across Australia or is it uh, even an international uh, initiative? Yeah, so let me start from the beginning. So let's say um, the Australian government or the Australian federal government gives is the one which has a major objective of making Australia one of the major renewable energy countries. So they are funding these projects through the Australian universities and these funds are given to um, Australian Renewable Energy Agency, which then goes distributing to the research teams in the universities which are mainly focused on thermal energy storage system, CSP technology, or turbine technology that can be coupled with the recent inventions of thermal energy storage. An example would be um, we have two major CSP technologies which are running here uh, in Australia. One is called Sundrop. So Sundrop is just a uh, as I, if I'm not mistaken, it's about 36 megawatt thermal CSP plant that is running the entire greenhouse of tomato production that supplies to Australia. So this is a self-sustaining power plant which runs the entire greenhouse that is 
desalination of the water, electricity generation, and heat storage. So, of course, whenever the plant get, gets down, they can always get back up from the nearby grid. Then another example of the power plant, which is test, which tested, and it's been proven to be good. It's tested sodium, liquid sodium as a potential heat transfer fluid. And they found out that it's capable of supporting high temperatures, which uh, normal standard thermal oils cannot support using the conventional CSP plants. So Australian government supports all avenues of research that try to take Australia to that path of sustainability. Excellent. Uh, sounds amazing, uh, your work. Um, thank you so much, Michael. All the best on the further research and hopefully you're successful at your research and uh, these products and these technologies prove successful. Um, if you, the viewer, liked the video, please uh, press the like button and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, um, comment below and um, Michael can also respond then to your comments or questions. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Stefan, for the interview. Bye. Thank you, Michael.